These rookies have taken huge hits to their value in the last couple weeks. Let's start with Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman, hey. eh, not great. This is this win. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Not horrible, but not great. No, not horrible. And that, do I think you should write him off? No, no, you should not write off Keon Coleman. Absolutely not. If he's a ridiculous price, then you should. But to say that Keon Coleman's combine didn't hurt him would probably be a little bit disingenuous in my opinion because mm -hmm. I don't think personally him going out and running a 464 was was good for his draft stock. But it's funny because, you know, the rational people of the world, and, and when I say rational people, I'm talking about everybody that's not on Dynasty Twitter, essentially. Yeah. So the rational people of the world look at that and they're like, yeah, that really hurts Keon Coleman. But the irrational people look at Keon Coleman running a 4 6 four forty, and they say... In the words, Larry Fitzgerald. Well, Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sorry, I'm funny. not trying to be rude. No, I mean, I don't care. That's that, kind of funny, though. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're convinced that, oh, 40 time doesn't matter for wide receiver. That's a big narrative. And I'm like, mm, I think it matters. Like, you know, we, we shorted Jordan Addison last year after he ran the 40 because it wasn't as fast as we wanted it to be. But the difference there was it he, didn't matter for Jordan Addison because it's not how he won. And you can say it's not how yeah. Keon Coleman wins. But the problem is Keon Coleman doesn't win that often. That, that's like the whole problem. Ooh. Like that's like the whole point of our argument with Keon Coleman. It's what it always has mm -hmm. been. And so I think what you wanted to see from Keon Coleman, even though he is a freak, I think you wanted to see more, you know, a faster 40 than 464. Mm -hmm. Because historically, when you have wide receivers that big, that slow, historically, they don't pan out. Right. He would be an outlier if he were to become a wide receiver two or wide receiver one on a consistent basis he would he would be an outlier that's why we don't use a top five receiver all time in larry fitzgerald as the reason to not short keon coleman it's for running kind of in, like should like be that. a crime but you know <laughs> it, it, it kind of should be but with keon coleman again and the other part of it was people were like oh well his gauntlet speed and i'm like seriously cool. gauntlet speed yeah, I, 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 I as, as a dynasty player, I could not care any less about that. I, I have to be honest with you. But you should not write Keon Coleman off completely yet, in our yeah. opinion, because Keon Coleman still is pretty raw. And when you have guys that are pretty raw coming into the NFL, there is always the possibility that they somebody gets a hold of them that can really develop their game. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that is not the norm, and it's not what happens all the time. So I don't want us to think that. And, and you saw, or I don't know if our rankings are coming out for this or not, but in our rankings, Keon Coleman slid quite a bit. Because, again, we did want to see more athleticism from Keon Coleman if he is going to come to the NFL and, and have the concerns that he has. Yeah. And this is a followers video. I mean, there are there's going to be risers and there's going to be followers in the combine. And this doesn't mean that at all costs you cannot ever draft Keon Coleman. What do we say on this channel all the time? You don't hate the you don't you do What do not, we say? You don't <laughs> hit the player. You hit the price. Yeah. And <laughs> With Keon Coleman, look, there are a lot of things oh in his game God. that I that I like. And honestly, they're not much unique from anyone else, and that is his athletic tools. His production, let's just remind ourselves a little bit about his production because you brought the – oh, like uh, 600 the, of his yards. Yeah, you brought the Addison comp up and just how Addison disappointed with his 40 time. And everyone's going to look to Keon Coleman's 40 time and say, well, he looked good in pretty much every other drill. And yeah, sure, sure, wh whatever, that's fine. Keon Coleman's production over the last three years, uh, seven receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown his true freshman year. Give him a break. True freshman year. Not a lot of freshmen get a ton of playing time. Sophomore season, 58 receptions, 798 yards. That's a significant jump. That's a second year breakup, breakup, breakout. Uh, that's seven touchdowns as well. Real promising for his, for his junior year before he declares. And he puts up 50 receptions for 658 yards and 11 touchdowns. So more touchdowns, less production overall from a receiving perspective. <laughs> it's mediocre college production. Does production always translate to NFL success or lack thereof? No. See Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed was never hyper-productive in college, and he was very successful in the NFL as a rookie. Could I see that with Keon, Keon Coleman eventually? 
Possibly. What was Jaden Reed's price last year because of his lack of production? Third or fourth round. It, very, he was very cheap, like end of second, early, early he third round. He rarely went in the second. Rarely went in the second, and he became a really good value. If Keon Coleman goes in that range, I will be taking him all day long. But when you're comparing him to Jordan Addison and you want to say, hey, well, Jordan Addison, you know, he ended up being successful despite the 40 time. Jordan Addison, like, didn't he have like 1,200 yards his sophomore year at did, Pitt before did, he transferred to USC? Did or did he, not he, like, in the Bolitnikoff, yeah, like. and then yeah, and then he goes to USC and he puts up you know a mediocre 900 yard season with Caleb Williams and a new offense, and then he declares anyways because he knows he's going to be drafted in the first round. I just don't see that as a similar situation. What I do see as a similar situation is a guy like Jonathan Mingo, oh. who is a very traits based guy, who everyone loved his physical stature, six one two twenty six. Oh, I can see the people. Do you just remember when we having, were supposed oh. to rank Jonathan Mingo higher because Steve Smith said so? Mm hmm. I do remember that. And that he ran a awesome. four four six. I mean, he was a fast guy. He was supposed to be, you know, like Sounded DK like Metcalf. Re- oh, do not ever. <laughs> Don't ever. That was like the biggest insult you could ever give me. Um, <laughs> in his production in college, 860 yards in 2022, 346 before that, 379 before that. Does this sound a little eensy wincy tiny bit familiar? to a guy like Keon Coleman, who is drafted because of traits, who is loved in the dynasty community because of traits, who people think will be drafted higher than expected because of traits. What happens to Mingo? Sure, yeah, he gets good draft capital. And then he falls anyways because everyone comes back to reality and is like, this guy actually isn't even that good. And he doesn't do anything at the NFL level. So wait and see still with Keon Coleman, see where he lands, see where he goes. And be respectful of his price. If it falls, sure, take a guy to dart throw on him. He doesn't check every single box that you're looking for for an elite wide receiver. He does check a couple athletically. Mm, yes. He does. He's, he, I mean, he's he's an interesting and intriguing pros- prospect. Yeah. But it's right. just a bummer to see him fall because yeah. we he, he really had a good chance to be a riser at the Combine, and he yes. just he didn't take advantage of that opportunity. So talk about Bucky Irving a little bit. Oh, Bucky. <laughs> good old Bucky. That's We've, we've talked about him quite a bit on this channel. It's not like we were in love with him or anything, but we did say, hey, like, look for this guy to have a significant role um, at, at the NFL level because of his receiving skill set at Oregon. Yep. Then we went through, and <laughs> we went through, yep, yep. and we did our uh, running back analysis with the yards per reception, and what's the minimum threshold that you have to meet for those, like, top 36 producing running backs over the mm-hmm. last few years, and it's about 8.25. Bucky Irving, even though he had a lot of receiving volume, did not meet that threshold. Now, he was still around it a little bit, but he didn't quite meet it. So we said, okay, this guy's going to be very draft capital dependent. How do you boost your draft stock as a running back, as a rookie prospect? You run a good 40 time and you test well, you know, size wise, measurable wise, all that good or stuff. Or if you're small, do one of those two things. Or, like, yeah, like- and he did none of them. He. Ran a very, very disappointing 40 time. He ran time. a 4 5 6 that, that was the deciding factor for me. I, I wanted to see, like, sub 4 4 5 easily, easily from Bucky Irving, at least. And he didn't even come close to it. It's unfortunate because he's such a tiny running back. Like, you want to see tiny running backs have success in the NFL, especially in this day and age where they have more of an opportunity to see Devon Achan. And Devon Achan had to run, like, a 4 3 Three forty or something, four four, three two, and uh, yeah. Sorry, Bucky. Uh, Look, the only way we're gonna be reconvinced about Bucky Irving going into the NFL is he is if he goes day two, and that honestly, to me, at this point, seems pretty unrealistic because of what he showcased at the NFL Combine, and we know factually that the draft stock of any rookie prospect at the combine is it, it impacts running backs more than anything. It does. Like it really does. Yeah. So, I mean, when you're talking about guys that go into the combine and measure at five, nine, one ninety, most of the time for guys that size to hit anyways, you have to be a pretty serious outlier. Right. But the outliers we have seen, you mentioned Devon H in the outliers we have seen I mean, had one Jameer thing. In Gibbs common. was undersized too. True. But they all had one thing in common fast they were fast the ones that hit that shouldn't have hit were fast and so when you have Bucky Irving a guy that wasn't efficient in college even though he was productive in college uh he is small and he comes out and runs a four five six it's not even so much that we don't like him because of his 40 time it's more that predictive analytics would suggest that Bucky Irving is not going to be a guy that would be 
hitting on your dynasty roster. So when you're talking about taking him in the third round, we have guys that we think that are more that guided dart throws. Take, yeah. That, that so, are going to hit the thresholds that statistically are going to point to them being more likely to be that running back one or running back two that you actually need if you want to start or flex them on your dynasty yeah. team. So, so let's approach Irving like uh, w- with the assumption that he is going to go day three. What's like the the highest that you'd be willing to take a dart throw at him in, in your rookie drafts? Right now, like mid-third. Mid-third? Yeah, because I mean, there's a handful of wide receivers right now at the beginning of the third round that I think I'm comfortable taking over him. Yeah, I- Including, a, I mean, a couple of running backs that yeah. I just think are more likely to hit than Bucky Irving. So it's yeah. not, again, it's not so much like, oh, he ran that 40 time, we're out. But it's it was just a kind of a combination. It was like the size, and it was like, oh, that's not good. So hopefully he runs a fast 40, and then he didn't. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I mean, at that point. Yeah, it, it's a bummer. It's a bummer that Bucky Irving can't be in that conversation of these underrated running backs in this class overall, just because of his testing. It's unfortunate because in our team blueprints over at FlockFantasy.com, we've been recommending time and time again for people to buy 24 seconds because of those running backs and how they could increase in value going at that range at those respective prices. And uh, yeah, it looks like this. It does. And if you want one of these, you have to go to FlockFantasy.com slash domain. We hang out over there with some other creators and uh, you get a lot of content from all of our channels, Uh, but when you use code domain and you sign up for our group, you get a team blueprint. We're going to give you a multi-year in-depth plan for your dynasty team, courtesy of Nathan and I, and Nathan and I will then again walk through this plan with you in your DMs one-on-one, you know, try to get you to win your dynasty leagues and win money. You also get the 2024 dynasty rookie draft guide published by us and our team. Like I said, flockfantasy.com slash domain. Use code domain when you sign up and you get all of these features and more. Audric Estimate is a guy... Also, that when you're talking about 40 time, it may be me, but 471. That's like one of the worst scream, 40 times that I've ever heard of in my life. Doesn't scream uh, speedy day, to me. Day two, even fourth, fifth, dare I say, sixth round. <laughs> like, if Audric Estime would have even ran a 458, I would have been like, right. let's go. Right. I, I was hoping for four fives, like in that range, and I was like, cool, that's fine with me. Audric Estime is a. a a chunky dude like i mean he's a big boy and <laughs> I, i'm just being honest and so yeah. i don't think audric estime is a guy that has enough like intangibles to where he's going to be selected early day three even like i no. think he's gonna end up being a fifth or sixth I, round guy yeah. he's i think he's more likely to be at best a committee guy Right. In my opinion. Right. So because of that, again, guys in his price range, we're more likely to take. That's just what this has turned into, essentially. It's like we, these guys were passing on them at price. We're all about price. We're all about value. Audrey Gessamay is probably not going to be a super good value. We mm-hmm. wanted to see him, again, run faster than a 4.7, for sure. Yeah. But and, and it's uh, unfortunate. It, that it sucks. I mean, he's a, he's a Notre Dame guy, big school. He's been very efficient and productive the last couple of years. 900 yards for 5.9 yards per carry and 11 touchdowns in 2022. 1,300 yards, 6.5 yards per carry. His final year in 2023 and 18 total touchdowns. Even had some receiving upside there as well. He averaged um, almost 8.5 yards per reception which is really good off of 17 receptions. But one thing that I thought was interesting, a, a guy who's watched a significant amount of film, like more than I have on SMA, is, is a guy like Brett Coleman who's talked about Audric SMA. And he said it's it's funny seeing SMA because he's a very efficient running back. He's very consistent, but you never really see much explosiveness or like a second or third gear out of him. He really like, there are no runs that he has in college that are past 10 or 15 yards because everyone is catching up with him because he's that slow. And to me, that's like... That just screams like Kyron Williams light. Like he's he's bigger than Kyron Williams, but he's slower. And I think Kyron Williams was even like Kyron Williams four six five. I thought I thought he was a better runner <laughs> in college than Estime is. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong. Like that's that's completely fine. I was I'm more just excited about Kyron here. Williams But yeah, Kyron Williams had more promise, and he still went in the fifth and was irrelevant for a time until he got a nice opportunity in L.A. So with Estime again, another guy kind of like Bucky Irving, where. The, Bucky Irving and SMA are essentially this year Sean Tucker and Zach Evans, where you had them relatively high in your rankings to start the year, and you're like, wait and see, wait and see, wait and see until the combine. The combine comes. They fall off because of their testing. This is what happens. This is the ebb and flow of the offseason with rookie prospects every single year at the running back position. It happens. Talk about Troy Franklin now. Troy Franklin. A guy we're not giving up on. No, we are definitely not giving up on Troy Franklin. This does not mean we dislike Troy Franklin in any way. This is just to say 
He's falling. He has fallen. Partially because Brian Thomas uh, separated himself from the rest of the field, including Troy Franklin. And also, Troy Franklin wasn't as fast as we were hopeful he could be. He has some size questions, sure. And no, we didn't expect him or want him to run like a 4-2-2 like Xavier Worthy did or 4-2-1. But, you know, I was hoping sub 4-4. And, and he didn't. He he didn't quite do that. Um, and, and it it just was a mediocre day for him. And I don't even want to say bad because I I don't think he looked not terrible. bad. But winging but a, he, 175 what is, what is, was not a good number for yeah. him. When you have risers at the NFL Combine who exceed expectations, and you have mediocre showcasers like Troy Franklin, what does mediocrity equal? Being falling mediocre. due to the risers oh. like it, it just happens by default and that's the reality with troy franklin honestly for troy franklin's price this could kind of be a best case scenario for him because mm. if he goes day two like we've expected him to go this entire time mm-hmm. then maybe his price is going to become way better realistic and you'll get more payoff with his price and the investment that you have to put into him as a rookie than you would have if he was going five or six picks higher so I'm, I want to be kind of positive with this one because, again, like we said, we like Troy Franklin. We still like some of these guys even that we talked about before him. Keon Coleman, with his potential price, maybe we'll like him in the future. But Franklin, I think of these guys on this list, probably has the best chance of still being a very successful wide receiver or a very successful rookie in the NFL given a really nice landing spot. Tez Walker's another guy that has really fallen in our ranks. And Tez Walker, really, a lot of this was because he really did not have a good senior bowl. Uh, at the combine, like, totally I think he had a 9.87 RAS, 9.87. That's pretty good. He had a pretty good 40 time. Uh, but I, I don't think we're worried about the athleticism with Tez Walker. I, I don't think that was ever really the question for us. It's more that he's pretty unpolished as a prospect. And again, there's a lot of development to happen. Tez Walker is, again, not a guy we're giving up on, but right now just a guy that's falling down in our rankings. And then, last but not least, Braylon Allen, a yeah. guy that did all, basically nothing at the Combine. And from some of the receiving drills that we saw, uh, the ball just went right through his hands. And it was like, eh. I guess you were just reminded of what Braylon Allen could eventually be at the NFL level, which is not a pass-catching running back, but maybe a, a guy that could threat. carry a uh, bell cow workload and be a red zone threat because he is huge. And there's like not many running backs that are like him really ever. But with him, again, kind of the product of risers rising and just mediocrity finding finding its resting place in that in those mediocre rounds, like the tail end of the second round, and early we'll third with Allen. And we will see. He'll yeah. be very draft capital dependent. If he goes day two, he'll move up our boards a bit because we do like him. We've been very vocal about Braylon Allen. Think that his skill set is unique enough that it could offer value to an NFL team like the Green Bay Packers. Please, 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 please. But with Allen, he didn't do anything at the combine, like uh, of of no, value. He didn't, us. He didn't 40, run his forty. Like, he he measured out like we expected him to. Big, his like broad jump was under. Ever. His broad jump was nothing. It was pretty blah. His vertical was pretty blah. He looked big though. Yeah, he looked big. We're not giving up on Raylan Allen. He's a guy we've been high on through this process, but at the same yep. time, it, it, we have to. We're being realistic. That people like, are passing him right now. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of it was just like it's a mid-running back class. Braylon Allen's decent. Yep. He's a red zone threat. But now yep. it's like, oh, some of these guys yeah. have some skills. We have a for sure top four running backs where we're like, as long as they get good draft capital like we expect, then they're going to be a tier above everyone else. And that is Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Marshawn Lloyd, and Jalen Wright now, who's the biggest riser in the right entire now. combine. So Exactly. All right. So the rookies aren't exactly undraftable, even though that's what I put as the title of this video. You can... You can get on us for clickbait. Fine, whatever. Fine. If you clicked on the video, then we 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 we're, won. Then we're glad you watch. <laughs> Do us a huge favor and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like on this video as well. Those two things help us out a ton. Appreciate you guys joining us. We'll see you later.